In thee the image was preserved with exactness, O Father. For taking up thy cross, thou didst follow Christ, and by thy deeds thou didst teach us to overlook the flesh, for it passes away, but to attend to the soul, since it is immortal. Therefore, O righteous Kenneth, thy spirit rejoices with the angels. Hello, my dear ones. We are now at the end of the summer. For us here at the monastery, this is the end of the pilgrimage season. And I want, I feel it is a duty to share with all of you the beauty, the blessing, the joy of walking where the saints have walked, of sailing where the saints have sailed, and of praying with them. Because although not all of you have been here physically present with us, we have prayed for you. Everywhere we go, every prayer we offer, I include you all in that prayer. And today I want to take you to the island of Inch Kenneth, um, or St. Kenneth's Island. This is one of the most beautiful, gentle, welcoming islands that I have seen in the Hebrides. And uh, it's got an abundance of detail from the beauty of the shores, the purity of its waters, all the way to the beauty of its wild flowers, or even, even the shells. This is where we gather most of the shells that we use in our prayer ropes, those beautiful yellow or whitish, sometimes reddish or greenish shells which we incorporate in our um, woolen prayer ropes. We get there by leaving from Finifort very early in the morning. Um, from Finifort we sail all alongside Iona and this provides us with some of the most beautiful views over the Abbey of Iona, the Abbey of St. Columba and all those beautiful saints of Iona. And then we leave Iona with a view of its northern side, which is where the White Strand of the Monks is located, a place where the last, the last major Viking attack took place. After that, the community very slowly but certainly withdrew to Ireland and abandoned the monastery. And then we venture out into the ocean. And when I say venture out, I really mean it, because there is nothing to protect us from the waters of the ocean. Basically, there is an opening in the islands where there's nothing between us and North America. So if the weather is not on our side, we don't go ahead. And this is the most weather-dependent day pilgrimage that we offer. We are going to see the beautiful Treshnish Isles and the abundance of birds of any kind, from puffins, which everybody loves, to cormorants and shags and um, gannets. We are going to see seals. If we are blessed, we are going to see minke whales or dolphins. Dolphins in particular tend to enjoy playing with us. I think they believe that we are all lost and they have this duty to lead us towards our destination. So they just surround us and they play with us sometimes for minutes on end. We are going to pass Langa, we are going to pass uh, Staffa. By the grace of God, if the weather allows us, we do approach Staffa, this amazing volcanic rock formation. And um, we are going to try to slowly, carefully approach Fingal's Cave which is perhaps the most famous of all the caves in the Hebridean Islands. I believe Mendelssohn composed um, a rhapsody inspired by the echo uh, of the water in this uh, cave. Staffa is a volcanic island, and so are all the Treshnish Isles. Ben Moor, the main top, the main mountain on Mull, used to be an active volcano, and the lava of this volcano was very abruptly cooled by the waters of the ocean, and that's how you end up with these extraordinary rock formations, these basalt columns coming out of the water straight up towards the sky. 
And then after the Trezhnish Isles, we sail alongside Mull. We see the wilderness of Mull, the coast where to this day nobody actually lives. And it's important to note that within these coasts there are caves where monks have lived in the first millennium. There is McKinnon's Cave over here, which is where a large community of monastics have lived. McKinnon is the name of one of the abbots of the monastery on Iona. And then close to McKinnon's Cave there is the priest's cave, where the priest, the spiritual father or the abbot of the community used to live. We finally approach Inch Kenneth and we make our way to the island by a dinghy because the waters are so shallow the sailing boat cannot make it all the way to the shore so we have to go in threes or fourth um, into this dinghy all the way to the shore. It is very short, it is a very pleasant experience, it allows you to actually touch the water and to see how clear and how gentle it is. And once we make it to the island, we slowly advance, going over this beautiful beach towards St. Kenneth's cave. Now, the cave of St. Kenneth is very interestingly chosen, because out of the multitude of caves in the area, he chose the one that actually faces the ocean. It doesn't make much sense in a, in a way, in a practical way, because that's how you get all the weather, all the storms, all the, um, the rain and the cold of the winter is simply thrown at you openly. But from a monastic point of view, if you realize that while being in the cave and you're looking out, you actually see the coast of Mull and at a distance Iona itself, you realize that it makes perfect sense spiritually that a hermit monk would want to be connected at least in this way with his home monastery and his monastic brothers. The cave has an exit at its back so in case of a Viking attack, the hermit could escape that way and run and hide so he doesn't get butchered, martyred by force as so many others have, uh, have been. This is where St. Kenneth lived, this is where he worked, this is where he prayed. And as it often happens, around a holy monastic, male or female, slowly, even despite his or her desire, a small community is formed. So as we make our way out of the cave, and as we cross another beautiful beach, all of a sudden we see this beautiful chapel. This is the chapel of the second millennium monastery, built here by the Catholic monks who came here and rebuilt over the ruins of the first millennium Celtic monasteries. Um, the chapel survives, it is in a surprisingly good shape. There is a beautiful collection of um, tombstones. The cemetery itself was one of the best known and most important cemeteries in the Celtic Isles. A lot of important people, nobility, aristocracy, chose to be buried here because they wanted to be as close to the holiness of those monastics as possible. And then we slowly make our way back to our boat and then we sail all the way towards Iona and Mull until two or three hours later, at a distance, you can once again discern the beautiful, the blessed shape of the Iona Abbey. There is a great danger that we reduce our spiritual lives to simply concepts and ideas. There is a great deadly temptation in us to, say some, to take something that is real and reduce it to something that simply exists in our minds. That's the difference between doing something and simply thinking about doing something. It's the difference between imagining the life of a saint and actually being here and touching the rock, touching the water, feeling the wind, hearing the waves, seeing the beauty of everything God surrounded them with, and simply imagining it all. This is 
the main blessing of going on a pilgrimage, on any pilgrimage anywhere, because it makes something that exists only in your mind so much more real and present. It touches your skin, it has an impact on your eye, on your emotions, and it simply transforms you from inside. I pray St. Kenneth blesses all of us. I pray today, as I always pray, especially when we are present here on his blessed island. Be blessed beyond hope, beyond dreams, my dear ones, now and ever. Amen, amen, amen.